January 27th, 1989. It was a pleasant sunny afternoon in the west of Japan in the sleepy state of Saga. 55-year-old Noriko Kuri and her husband had left work early and drove to their favorite countryside picnic spot in a remote forest at the foot of the mountain range, Kitagata Otega. Enjoying the afternoon sunlight, Noriko started to pick her favorite flowers and slowly moved deeper and deeper into the forest. However, she noticed there were clothes hanging from the trees, t-shirts, jeans, underwear, which concerned her as it was so out of place in such a remote area. You see, not many people knew about this secret spot. And anyway, why would they strip all their clothes off and throw them up into the trees? As she was joking to her husband that someone was going to get cold tonight, Noriko tripped over what she thought was a tree root. When she looked down, she dropped her flowers and silently screamed in terror. Noriko had stumbled over the corpse of a woman. This was the last time Noriko and her husband ever went to their favorite countryside picnic spot. When the police arrived at the scene and searched the area further, they were chilled to find two more bodies. The bodies were soon identified and according to their autopsies, Two of them had died after being strangled. One of the bodies was little more than a skeleton at that point. Her cause of death could not be determined. You see, between the years of 1975 and 1989, the sleepy town of Kitagata in the Japanese state of Saga has been living in fear of a serial killer, and this brought the body count to seven. If that wasn't bad enough, it gets creepier. Each of the victims went missing on a Wednesday and five out of the seven were strangled. This is the unsolved case of the Wednesday Strangler. The first victim in this string of killings was Tamiko Yamazaki, a 12-year-old junior high school student who lived with her divorced mother in the town of Kitagata. On Wednesday, August 27th, 1975, Tomiko invited a friend to come over while her mother was at work. The friend went back home around 7 p.m. and this was the last time anybody would see Tomiko alive. When her mother returned home that night, she found that Tomiko was not there. It seemed her daughter had left in a rush. Tomiko had left her shoes behind and left the TV on. The authorities suspected that she had been abducted. Five years later on, on Wednesday, April the 12th, 1980, 20-year-old Ritsuko Hayakutake disappeared from her home in the small city of Shiroishi. Like Tomiko, Ritsuko was also home alone during that evening. Her father and mother were at the hospital while her brother was at work and her sister was sleeping at a friend's house. Ritsuko had earlier tried to commit suicide two times, but the family suspected that she had got in with the wrong crowd after her family received a strange phone call four days after she disappeared. The caller, an unidentified man told Rusuko's father not to look for his daughter. Two months would pass before a health company worker found Rusuko's naked body hidden in a septic tank in Shiroishu's elementary school. Three days later, on June 27th, after further investigation, Tomiko's body was found in the same tank. After these two disappearances had been connected, Suspicion fell on a 29-year-old unemployed man who lived in Shiroishi. The man had dated Risuko previously and planned to marry her sister at one time. He also frequently went to the club where Tomiko's mother worked. His alibi the day Risuko went missing was weak. Risuko was last seen when she left her job at a coffee shop at 11.30 p.m. The suspect left a bar at 11 p.m. and apparently didn't come home until the morning. On September the 8th, the suspect was arrested for a sexual assault he had allegedly committed three years earlier. While he admitted to the sexual assault, he denied killing Rasuko or Tomiko. The police compared his handwriting to a threatening letter Rasuko's family had received. Although the suspect's handwriting was similar, the authorities let him go and dropped the case due to lack of evidence. The third victim, 27-year-old Shizuko Ikagami 
went missing after leaving her job at a garments factory on Wednesday, October the 7th, 1981. Her body was discovered in a vacant lot three weeks later. Shizuko had been strangled to death with an electrical cord that was found around her neck. The fourth victim, Kumi Nishiyama, was an 11-year-old girl who disappeared on Wednesday, February the 17th, 1982. Kumi left school with some friends, but never made it home. Her body, partially naked, was found in a bag in some woods near her school the next morning. It was estimated that she had been strangled to death 10 minutes after she left her friends. The same day Kumi was murdered, a middle-aged man in a white car was seen near her school. The man tried pressurizing a woman at a bus station to get into his car, but the woman refused and threatened to call the police. Later, the man was seen talking to some junior high school girls. His car was also seen near Kumi's school around the same time she was murdered. The next murder would not happen for another five years. On Wednesday, July the 8th, 1987, 48-year-old Sumiko Fujisa got out of her work early to go party with some co-workers. After an hour, the women decided to go to another bar and invited Sumiko to come with them. Sumiko declined the invitation and left the store by herself. She never made it home and her family reported her missing. On Wednesday, December the 7th, 1988, 50 year old Kiyomi Nakajima disappeared after leaving her house to go to practice volleyball at a sports center that was less than a mile away. Two weeks into her disappearance, her husband received a phone call from a man who claimed that Kiyomi had been found. The man would not specify where Kiyomi was or how he knew her location. The final victim was 37 year old Yoshino Tatsu, a separated mother who lived with her parents and son. On Wednesday, January the 25th, 1989, Yoshino talked to an unidentified person on the phone. After she finished her conversation and hung up, she told her mother that she was leaving to go pick up a friend. Her car was found abandoned in the parking lot of a nearby bowling alley later that day. Not much happened in the investigations of these murders until June 2002, when a 39-year-old burglar named Teru Hiko Matsue was arrested for the murders of Yoshino Tatsu. Teruhiko was arrested two more times in July for the murders of Sumiko and Kiyomo. There was a DNA match between Matsuo and some saliva found on Yoshino's body. This piece of evidence was thrown out as insufficient. After a trial lasting more than four years, Matsuo was acquitted of three murders and compensated with 580 million yen for the damages he suffered. After the serial killer being at large for over 18 years, on February the 2nd, 2007, Saga Criminal Affairs Bureau of the Ministry of Justice officially announced it would give up on any further investigations. Detective Director Koichi Ishada and others say they were sorry for the bereaved families for the worst possible outcome to their investigations. The Wednesday Strangler still walks amongst us.